Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. Sing it to him. Sing it to him like you love him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you're worthy of all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. There was a, we had an evangelist in the church uh, that night. We were in a series of meetings, and it was a drama. And uh, it's kind of like the modern day today. Um, uh, heaven's, hell's, heaven, heaven's gates, hell's flames, hell's flames. I don't know if you've ever been seen that drama, but it's a drama that goes around. And it was much like that. And it depicted Judgment Day. And I can remember that um, it had flames on one side of the platform flames and the judgment seat the, the throne of God was in the middle and these people would come in and people I knew and they would come before the throne and, and in fact I, my aunt was one I remember four years old she came down the aisle and she stood before the throne and, and God said I don't know you I don't know you and I remember she went screaming into the into those flames of hell and that will impact you as a four year old and I was like oh my aunt just went to hell I thought, I am not going to hell. Four years old, I knew the difference. And that night, I accepted Jesus as my Savior. <laughs> when I was eight years old, I got filled with the Holy Ghost. And I can remember many times coming down and, and standing with uh, my friends. And I, was just, I just wanted to be filled with the Holy Ghost didn't understand all that I was going to receive but all I knew is I wanted to be baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence just like in Acts chapter 2 of speaking with tongues and I can remember the service that I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost 8 years old 
You say, kids don't really get it. Oh, yeah, they do. Oh, yes, they do. I remember the day I was born again. I remember the day I was filled with the Holy Ghost. And I remember times throughout my life where I was healed by the power of God. Healed. I remember one time as a teenager, I blew my knee out playing volleyball with my cousins. And I uh, ended up going uh, to see a doctor. And uh, somehow I knew enough to m- put my faith in the Word of God. You know, my daddy was, a, was a, a, an amazing preacher, teacher of the Word. He lived the life of faith. Not until his latter years did he preach the Word of faith like we know it today, if you get what I'm saying. But he lived it. So he put it in me. And I can remember, uh, I found a scripture to stand on as a teenager. And I grabbed hold of that scripture from my knee. I was not going to have surgery. They, they said, you'll probably have to have surgery. When I went back to the doctor to have my knee checked out, this was interesting because I remember this. Whenever he would bend my knee, I could feel it popping on the inside. But I wasn't about to say, oh, it's still popping. But no, I don't care what my knee feels like. I took a stand, a teenager. I took a stand and I said, nope, I, I don't believe anything, but that my knee is healed. And you know what? He moved that knee around. He goes, wow. He said, your knee is your knee's normal. Your knee's fine. You don't need surgery. And I thought, da da devil, na na. The word works. I remember those times. I remember those times. I remember so many times. I remember getting attacked, getting attacked with symptoms on flights overseas. When you're overseas, when you're up in the air, traveling over the ocean, and you get hit with symptoms, that's not fun. And it's a long time until you land. I remember, Pastor has a, a teaching he taught. I think you taught that message before we were ever even married. It's called Healing Through the Word. That has been my medicine cabinet tape all these years. Right in that medicine cabinet, you need to, along with next to that bottle of Tylenol and Excedrin and Ibuprofen, you need to have you a a healing something. Cassettes, they don't make them anymore. They rarely make CDs. You get you something that you can put on when you get attacked in your body. Because attacks will come. Do you hear what I said? Attacks will come. But it's what we do with those, those attacks that makes all the difference. I refuse to go under. I declare that I will always rise and above. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the heel to the Lord, not the defeated one. I say it with my mouth and I believe it in my heart because it's true. It's true. So it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank Thank you jesus Jesus. lord Lord, you're worthy of all the the glory and all the the honor and all the the praise it makes me want to shout I must say I'm glad this year's over. For various reasons. But you know what? There's victory all through it. There is victory all through 2015, 2015. Victory. I mean, you're telling me my mom and daddy going to heaven is not victorious? Hallelujah. They would do the whole year over all over again, I'm sure. And there's no defeat to a Christian. There's no defeat to a believer. And you know what? There's no defeat to us who are left behind. Because soon and very soon, soon and very soon, I said soon and very soon. <laughs> Woo! I told my daddy when I was saying my final goodbye to that earthly house 
I said to him, I said, Daddy, I'll meet you on the corner of Glory Avenue and Hallelujah Boulevard soon and very soon. And I believe it. There's no defeat for a Christian. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's sing it again. earthen treasure in your belly he said out of your belly it would flow rivers of living water I believe the Holy Spirit of God just desires to bubble up out of some of us tonight answers to prayer coming out of the human spirit tonight praying in the Holy Ghost do you mind if we take two minutes and just let those rivers flow tonight Suleiman Kenya Sunday Ribebeke se Sadi andala makarada Sulele bole mato I need a heal in the night coming down from the throne tonight understanding and I will pray with the spirit I will sing with my understanding and I will sing in the spirit if you're filled with the Holy Ghost at the evidence of speaking in tongues do you realize what you have in you the capabilities what has been deposited in you the Spirit of God himself We're communicating with God himself, with our Heavenly Father, the Holy Ghost on the inside of us, taking hold together with against. He is our helper and he'll help you. When you don't know how you should pray as you should, the Spirit of God will take hold with you and pray. It won't make sense to you, you won't understand it. Thank God we bypassed this thing because we're so limited with this. But that's when we let that river out of your belly shall flow rivers. Allow that river to flow out of you. And it will be like a river. It'll just flow up and out of you. Praying out your future. Praying out the will of God. Out of right here. 
not here, right here, right here. And when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we stir ourselves up. We build ourselves up. We're not speaking to man. We're not speaking to each other. We're speaking divine mysteries, the Bible says, to God. It's a mystery to us, but it's not a mystery to Him. Hallelujah. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Singing in the Holy Ghost. Worshiping in the Holy Ghost. Praising in the Holy Ghost. When I think about you, Lord, how you saved me, how you healed me, how you filled me with the Holy Ghost, how you healed me to the uttermost. When I think about, come on, think about the Lord tonight. How He picked you up and He turned your life around. He set your feet. He set your feet. years ago. Hold your hands up high. Over 30 years ago. Over 40 years ago. Over 50 years ago. I'm in that category. Barely. Over 60 years ago. Uh, I don't think there's anybody. Okay. Oh, there is. I see you. Glory to God. Woo! Over 60 years of walking with Jesus. God forbid that the same fervency that we experienced when we were born again, that that fire would ever go out. Sometimes we need to do a temperature check. Or if I had a thermometer, stick it somewhere. Take your temperature. Are you on fire? Are you burning up? Are you cold? 
very cool, very cool. We, we have to do that. It's so important that we do that. Can you imagine if the whole church worldwide was so on fire, so on fire because of what Jesus did for them, because of what God provided for them, that they couldn't be quiet. It's like fire shut them up in my bones and I cannot contain myself. So excited that everybody you meet, do you know Jesus? Do you know that Jesus is coming soon? Do you know he's really coming soon? That we're at the end of the world. Hello, something's going to happen. But I'm telling you, we aren't going to be here. We're going to be gone. Do we really believe it? My daddy used to end almost every Sunday. Something about Jesus coming soon. Never failed. I heard that my whole life. But you know what? Jesus is coming soon. So the question remains, what are we doing about it? Make sure that your fervency is as fervent today as it was 60 years ago or 50 years ago or 10 years ago or a year ago. And then we got filled with the Holy Ghost. We became those wild Pentecostals. That should just add to the fire because that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. Fire sat on them. That should light you to where you can't be still. You can't be quiet. And then signs, wonders, demonstrations, healings, and miracles. Not only working in us and for us, but through us. The church really realized, rise up, church. Be the church. Be the church. We need to be the church. We are equipped with signs, wonders, and miracles. Jesus said, if we'll lay our hands on the sick, they might recover. They will recover. They will recover. If we do what? We lay our hands on the sick. Don't forget the day you were born again. Don't forget the day you were filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't forget all those times you were healed. But don't just sit down and do nothing. Let the church rise up and be the church. Take it outside of these walls. There's a, there is a lost and dying world probably within a block of here. I would pretty much be safe and sane. Right on the other side of that creek out there. There's a whole neighborhood. When we were on our trip in... Um, Europe in November. We were walking the streets of um, Athens and then Paris. We looked at each other, both places. And we said, you know, if the rapture were to take place at this moment, would these people even know? Well, we'd be gone. But there probably wouldn't have been very many others. Life would have continued as normal. That's, that's a, that's a mind-boggling thought. A whole city, a whole, a whole city. Sure, there's believers in both of those cities. But when you're talking about the big picture, the percentage is very, very small. In Tulsa, when Jesus comes, when Jesus comes, which is soon, he's coming back, you know. When Jesus comes, will this city even know? We're gone. Think about it. So as we move forward to 2015, 16, sorry. 16, not doing 2015 again, 16. Think about daily, the day you were born again and the change that was took place in your heart and when you got filled with the Holy Ghost and, and healed and don't just keep it to yourself keep it, don't keep it to yourself I think it was Smith Wigglesworth would wake up every morning and he'd say was it Smith Wigglesworth? Lord lead me to the one that is closest to, yeah, that is closest to eternity today may that be our prayer every morning Lord 
lead me to the one that is closest to eternity. And then to go about our business with our spiritual antennas up so that we are not going to miss that opportunity or not going to see it because we're so focused on us. We've got a big job to do. He's coming back for a glorious church. A glorious church. A glorious church. A church full of the glory. You know, it's, the Bible talks about him coming back on a cloud. We'll see him on a cloud. I've often thought, oh, I want to be in a service where the cloud moves in. All of a sudden, the, 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 there is no ceiling. We just step out on into that cloud and away we go. So think about it. What's that word? Sila? Sela. Think about it. Just think about it. Think about it day and night. I hope you wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. Hope you can't sleep thinking about it. Because it's serious business. It's time for the church to rise up and be the church, not be selfish. It is no longer us four and no more. There should not be an empty seat in this place. Why do we have empty seats? We have to go and we have to share the good news because we are surrounded by people that have to have the good news. We have a job to do. We have a job to do. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. He's done so much for me. I just can't even tell it all. How many of you can say amen to that? He's done so much. I cannot tell it all. Glory to God. So sing it again. When I think about you, Lord, how you saved me, how you raised me, how you filled me with the Holy Ghost, how you healed me to the uttermost. Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, it's services. It's not a, as important what a person has to say as what the Holy Ghost has to say. You know, Paul said, uh, writing to the Ephesians, he talked about the whole armor of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and so on. And he said, and pray for me that utterance may be given unto me. In other words, pray that I'll have something to say, not out of my knowledge, but out of his. Not out of my heart, but out of his heart. I'm just, all, I'm always thankful when the Holy Ghost just comes in and says, okay, I got some things I want to say. 
I, I want to exhort tonight. I want to I want to say some things, and I want to I want to stir some folks up, and I I want to get the church stirred up in 2015 so we can go running into 2016. Because 2016 is not going to be anything like 2015 was. Not going to be anything like that. It's going to be it's going to be different. It's going to be different. You watch. Hallelujah. God's not done with the church. The world's going to go the way the world's going to go. There's not a lot you can do about that. But I'll tell you, God's not done with the church. And so why not go? Why not hit it with a running start? You know, I remember. I guess you can go ahead and be seated for a minute. <coughs> I'm just going to talk for a few minutes until see if Pastor Janet gets something else. I said all that to say. I said, see if. I'll see if. You know, I mean, we've been married almost 37 years. Wow. Am I good? <laughs> and, uh, you know, and, and, and I can tell when the Holy Ghost is on her. And, uh, you know, I mean, of course, I've spent a good part of the day preparing and getting ready, you know, messages. I got like a dozen of them. That's not an issue. I've got a file of messages unused that I just never got to use. You know, but I'm just always glad to come in and just see the Holy Ghost just where he just finds a vein and we know enough to stay with it. You know, it's not, well, I got to preach my message, you know. If it's mine, then I, I don't need it any. I want his. But, um, hallelujah. It's going somewhere with that. Praise God. I just appreciate the way the Spirit of God moves. If we'll just, you know, we'll just move along with him. Um, yeah, I, when I was in, actually starting in junior high and on into high, part of high school, uh, I, uh, you know, we had track and field, uh, small town, but we had a, a good track team, so on, and, and uh, I was on the, uh, a, a number of uh, relay teams, and uh, you know, it, the, the neat thing is, you know, you don't just stand there until somebody runs up and hands you the baton. When you see them coming, you start running. So all of a sudden, you're running the same speed. When they hand you the baton, you take off. But the way to hand it off is to already start running before it gets put in your hand. And we're kind of finishing up 2015 here. We might as well start running. Because 2016 is a little over 24 hours away. And I don't know about you. I don't want to be standing here flat-footed. I want to be moving. And I think God's given us a chance to kind of get moving to where we can get that hand back out there in 2015 can hand off to 2016 and we can and we can be we can launch out with a we can launch out with some momentum already see what we're in this is not a i like what somebody told me i heard it probably in the last couple of years a friend of mine made the, the statement he said we we in the christian world we've had kind of a a tendency to look at things as a a, a sprint we want to we want to get out and run as fast as we can as hard as we can and burn out as quick as we can you know, and, and we end up being like, you know, bottle rockets. They go make they go up in the air, make a lot of noise, and then they just fall into the water and disappear. And we've had a lot of that in the kingdom. And so really, we've kind of had to get past the mentality of running how fast I can. And, and then we got to a mentality of, of um, marathon runners. We're in it for the long haul. It's not how fast we can go. It's how steady we can stay until we finish our course, finish our race. And that's good. But then one friend of mine made this statement. He said, he said, really, we've missed it trying to be in the sprinters and trying to be marathon runners. He said, we ought to, what we need to be is we need to understand we're, we're, uh, we're relay teams. Because if we don't run like we're supposed to run and know that if Jesus doesn't come back in our lifetime, there's another bunch we're going to hand this thing off to. And we better hand them the right baton. Because if we don't hand off what we got, they're going to find something of their own. And who knows what that'll be, because our baton came from the last generation, and that came from the last generation. And, and so, uh, so that's where we're at. We're, we're at a place right now that, that uh, things are, there's a momentum going right now. And God's handing some things off to another generation coming up here. And uh, hallelujah, but he is not done with the dinosaurs yet. Not that I know any. Hallelujah. Praise God. Got anything else? Huh? I wasn't. 
She said, speak for yourself. I wasn't. I was talking about those other folks out there. I'm not a dinosaur. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I'm, 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 che I'm checking the temperature here. My goodness. You know, I always say, I'm, I'm just checking to see which runway's open. Well, right now they're all open. And I can't take all of them. In fact, I'm not sure even to take one. We may just hold that off until after the first of the year. I've got about a, a number of things stirring on the inside. But, uh, you know, so what we don't want to do is go past the Holy Ghost. Sometimes when he said what he wants to say and done what he wants to do, we need to just let that settle on the inside and take us where we need to go. So, um, hallelujah. Let's just lift our hands up. Just, just minister to him. Glory to God. Ah, thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, we worship you, Lord. When I think about the Lord, what he's done for me. Oh, I'm so thankful, Father. My goodness. Hallelujah. When I think about you, what you've done for me. Hallelujah. Heal my body, set me free. Thank you, Father. I'm thankful for where I am at instead of where I could be. Oh, I'm so grateful, so thankful, Father. Thank you that you brought me to this place by your power and your grace. Thank you, dear Father. You gave me the privilege to be born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, and got to start out and run to this place of my race. Oh, thank you, Father. Heal my body and fix my mind. Glory to God talked to me about your will and made it so easy to find thank you father thank you for what's in the future it's really getting bright and it's going to be explosive for the ones that will walk in the light no occasion of stumbling no occasion to fall we're going to fulfill your will once and for all we're grateful father for where we're going in the days ahead thank you father I've gotten past the life of fear and dread I'm going on in to, your, to a wonderful place thank you dear father it's by your mighty power your faith and your grace hallelujah thank you father mighty wave of healing is about to begin to flow signs wonders and miracles this house is going to get to know oh many 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 even in this place We'll launch out and go here and there. Many in this place are going to end up going almost everywhere. Oh, it's not just this house. It's the kingdom. It's the whole body, too. We're handing the baton off, and there's a whole bunch of us that are about to watch the fullness of you. Now we thank you, Father. Oh, we thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence in this place. Speak to our hearts. Thank you, Father, that, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, hallelujah. Some in this place are going to step into a, a new season. Some are going to step into a new season, hallelujah, <laughs> glory to God, yeah, hallelujah. Yes, some things in one place will decrease, but that's so some things in some other place can increase. And, and all those things that are going to increase, my, my, my. The power, the demonstration, your presence too, going to step into some place. Wow, in the, really the fullness, dear Lord, of you. Hallelujah. New seasons, new seasons, new seasons. Oh, not for everybody, no. Many are already walking in the place they need to walk. And then you walk in the places and they're finding what you want them to do and to whom you want them to talk. But, oh, Father, I thank you. There are those that will cross over a line and go across the border to a new location and step into some places with mighty manifestation. Hallelujah. See no more, no do more in the days ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, Father, we lift our hands and thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, th thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. No such thing as an unreachable place. No such thing as an unreachable people. No such thing as an unreachable nation. No such thing as an unreachable 
section even not only of this nation but of others no such thing thank you Lord you got ways to get us in you got ways to get us back out hallelujah thank you Father but I thank you as we cross over into next year we're going in with the power we're going in with a shout we're not going in to try to get the victory we're going in because we've already got it it's already working on the inside it's going to show up on the outside hallelujah we're going in with our tanks full our armor on hallelujah glory to God thank you for it Father Oh, there's just a stirring. There's a rumbling. There's a rumbling. There's a rumbling. A rumbling. A rumbling. A rumbling. Ah, oh, there's a rumbling we can hear. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, just as Elijah said, there's a rain cloud coming. Hallelujah. I hear the sound of abundance of rain. There's a rumbling going. Ah, oh, no, it's not a rumbling of destruction. It's a rumbling of construction. Constructing the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you for it, dear Father. There's a sound of abundance of rain. Elijah heard it before he saw it, prayed it before he saw it, but when he heard it and prayed it, he got it. Same shall be of the church. We can hear it, but we don't see it. We believe it, but we don't see it. <laughs> We're praying it, but we don't see it. But because we hear it and pray it, we will see it. The rain will fall. Power will flow. Healings and miracles will all come to know. Thank you for it, Father. But right now, we just take time to give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. You brought us to this location. You brought us to this place. You brought us to a place of manifestation. An outpouring of your power, your might, your miracles, and your grace. Thank you. Ah. Oh, thank you, Father. Oh, yeah. Even when it looks impossible, that's when you begin to move. When it looks like it just couldn't happen, that's when you begin to flow. Just when it looks like there's no way out, that's when your power will really come to know. When it gets to where man can take no credit and man cannot say, we made this happen. Man can't say, look what I did, look what I built, and look what I made to happen. When we get to that place, when no man can take any glory, no man can take any credit, that's when we're going to see Almighty God move. My, my, my. Hallelujah. The healings, the miracles. Yeah, in the creative order. The miracles in the creative order. Creative order. Oh, we've seen a few things, just a splattering here and there. But miracles in the creative order are going to be as common, as common, as common, as common as the day when we would go to meetings and see a dozen legs grow or a dozen arms grow, just grow out an inch or two. Oh, that was wonderful. Coming into a time when creative miracles, there'll be six or eight lined up, maybe even 10 or more. And suddenly, creative miracles will happen because that's what you've got in store. Limbs will grow where there were no limbs. Organs be, will be replaced where medical sciences had to remove them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. This is not a cunningly devised fable. No, this is, this is almighty truth. This is truth. And it'll come to pass. Come to pass. Oh, my, 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 my. Eardrums were replaced where there was no. Uh, eyes formed where an eye was gone it'll be just common to hear about someone not having a heart transplant but having a new heart put in by the Holy Ghost be common common it'll be common be common for those diagnosed with final stage cancer an organ totally totally destroyed come into a service the glory will show up They'll walk back out to the same doctor. The same doctor look at it and say, I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. We'll be able to say, I'll help you understand it. There's a God in heaven and he lives in my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Internal organs. Internal organs. Just made brand new. Made brand new. Medical science is about to be astounded. Lord, I pray that we're coming into the day when instead of the church sending folks to the doctor, the doctors will send folks to the church. 
I pray there will be churches raised up where medical science will say, we can't help you. You better go down to that place because they got something going we can't do anything about. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we lift our hands and we give you praise and glory and honor and thanks. And, dear Lord, we know. We know as well as we know our name. This is not for a dozen healing evangelists. This is not for six or eight prophets. This is not for the evangelists. Oh, yeah, we'll always have those for the preparing and equipping of the saints. This is for the body. This is for the body. This is for the body. This is for the, the body of Christ to go forth. This is what this is for. It's going to be too big for you to raise up a dozen healing evangelists. It's going to be so big you're going to have to spill this thing over to the body. Hallelujah. Take it places the five-fold ministry can't go. Take it to people that will never listen to a preacher. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Well, again, let's lift. Man. Lift our hands. Oh, Jesus. 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 We want your will. We want your way. We want what you to do because you've already paid the price. The blood's been shed. Redemption's been bought. We've got your word, and for years now we've been taught. Now the wind will blow from north, south, east, and west, and the church will rise up and flow in your best like nothing that's ever been seen in the eons in the past. The church is going to launch forward, and in the last days we'll have a blast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, let's stand to our feet and give him thanks. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I pray about this upcoming year. May we be more Holy Ghost sensitive, more Holy Ghost led, more Holy Ghost taught than we've ever been before. May we take a quantum leap forward into the things of the Spirit, recognizing your voice and obedient when we hear it. May we have boldness to do what we've never done before. May we have boldness to obey you, launching out into the deep. Hallelujah. Not concerned about our reputation. Not concerned about what people think. Not concerned about being rejected. May we launch out into the deep, bold in the Holy Ghost. Not obnoxious. Not flesh driven. But oh, spirit led. We thank you for it, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, let's give him thanks. We ought, to just, we ought to just throw up our hands and say, Lord, here I am. Make me a blessing. Work through my life. I'm available. I'm available. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. That's our assignment. Thank you, Father. Oh, my, my. And oh, my goodness. And those, dear Father, those, 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 so many, so many, so many right here in our own nation. Didn't used to be that way, but so many in our own nation. Minds warped, twisted, and bent. So many in our own nation, oppressed by evil spirits. Been unloaded, been spewed out on our nation. Oh, Lord, we know there's been excesses over the years, ridiculous excesses. The church ought to know better, but we didn't. But we've learned some things. And there'll be excesses. There'll be those that'll run off into Never Never Land, of course. But a genuine, a genuine move of the Spirit of God, backed up by the name of Jesus, empowered by word of knowledge and discerning of spirits, and many lives set free from long-time bondage. Those that have been given up, no hope for ever being the same, ever being normal. Yeah, one touch of the Holy Ghost. Finger of God. 
<laughs> and their minds will be set free. And their lives will be changed. Be productive in society. Thank you for it, dear Father. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, Lord, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So many, so many, so many in our military that have come back so confused and mixed up. One touch of God set them free. Thank you for a wave going, going through our heroes. A wave of the glory going through our heroes that have taken the battle over so we didn't have to fight it here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Well, let's give him thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One of you three's got something over here. I'm not sure who it is. Are you sure? Absolutely. Hallelujah. Don't be discouraged, but be encouraged. There's some that may have believed for things this year, and in your understanding and in your believing, it was before this year was over. But there is no time and distance with God. So just continue to keep your faith alive because faith is now. And it doesn't have to necessarily believe in the, uh, be in this calendar year, but continue to keep your faith alive in that which you've believed and that which you've seen with the eyes of your faith, it shall surely come to pass. So just be encouraged and do not be discouraged. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. If that you take that. If that you just take that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sure. Hallelujah. Just check it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well. Anything else, babe? No? Clear? Praise God. Angela, you got something rolling? No? You clear? All right. <laughs> All right. Praise God. Well, oh, thank you, Father. Well, one more time. We ought to just pray in the Holy Ghost just a minute or so. Just fine-tune our spirits. Ah, Pascono, Vrogele, Brande, Kistilo, Spavala, Stombre, Pitala, Vestanje, Bragasto, Volopora, Dechkete. Egle danje progodo sopra gere sačke nistike lanike. Nele buruske lastike, skinistike lastike. Mele boru boru sala gere steske nistipa. Bene gudusto soske nistipa laste. O spravake deste. Hallelujah. Ah, we give you glory and praise and honor and thanks. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we do pray over, we declare over this upcoming year. A year of blessing and prosperity will flow. A year of healings and miracles. A greater dimension will come to know. Thank you, Father. Though the, the world may operate even more and more in confusion, we'll always be in the right place at the right time. If disaster strikes, we'll not be there. If disaster strikes, we'll be in a place called there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Flurries of angelic activity coming to our aid. Glory to God. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Supernatural divine advertisement. Lord, we, we pray over this upcoming year. Our heart cries, Lord, make us a blessing. We don't want to just go and hide. No, we want to go... Let our, like a light on a hill, we want to go let our light shine. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. But let's just sing that one more time. When I think about you, Lord, how you saved me, how you raised me, how you feed me, the Holy Ghost, how you 
talking about when she was four years old, walked in, and was in a, in a, uh, one of these skits, not the right word, I don't know what you call it, but a drama, a drama production. Uh, those are amazing. Pastor Sam Carr has those on a regular basis in his church in Shreveport, and they just reach lots and lots and lots of particularly young people. She talked about that where for a four-year-old, it's so easy to understand. There's hell, there's heaven. It's so easy to understand that at four years old, she could understand it and make the choice. You know? Walked with God. I mean, eight years old, filled with the Holy Ghost. You know, some of us, we, don't, we, we, we just didn't get to that place that early or that quick. That's the way it ought to be. That's the way it should be, but maybe you're in here tonight and, and uh, maybe you'd say, well, you know, I, I've never made that decision. You know, I mean, there's a heaven, there's a hell. I just figured, you know, if you're good, you go to heaven. If you're bad, you go to hell. Good or bad's got nothing to do with it. It just depends on what family you're in. If you're in the family of God, and the only way in his family is through his son, through Jesus. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Nobody comes to the, the Father except by me. If you're here and you've never made Jesus Lord of your life, never been saved, never been born again, never gotten a fresh start, second chance at life, if that's you... Or if you say, well, I'm, I did that. I prayed that prayer one time, maybe recently, maybe decades ago. But I'm not right with God today. If that's you, uh, this is the best time in the world to get that straight. If things aren't right between you and God, you've never been saved or you were, but you backed away and went another direction. If that's you, raise your hand up. I want to pray for you. Anybody here say that's me? My life is not right with God. I really, I want to get some things straight. Anybody here? Oh, good, thank you. Anybody else say, pray for me. Pray for me. I want to make Jesus Lord of my life. I want to be, I want to, I want to know, I want, I want to finish this year out and launch into next year. I want to, I want to, I want to know where I'm going. I don't want to hope I get to heaven. Hope so doesn't get you there. I want to know where I'm headed. We know we've passed from death to life. 
We don't hope we've made it. We know. It's a, it's a no, you know in, you know in your knower once you've made that decision, once you've got things clear with God. Never have to be under condemnation again. Never have to wonder again. Anybody else, just, just wave your hand at me. Or maybe you'd say, well, I know I'm saved, but I've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. She talked about being filled with the Holy Ghost at eight years old. Well, I'm beyond eight, but I've never been filled. And I want that power in my life. I, I want that extra dose of God's power in my life to be a witness and to fulfill his will for my life. And if that's you, wave your hand at me. Say, Pastor, I've never been filled with the Holy Ghost. I want that in my life. Wave your hand at me. Anybody here? Say, pray for me. I'm telling you, I need a dose of the power of God. Anybody here? All right. Well, if you'd look up here at me, if you raised your hand, I want to pray for you. Okay? I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to make you say anything publicly. But I want to pray for you. If you raised your hand on any of those invitations, or if you should have, but you didn't, just come join me in the front just for a moment. Good. Hallelujah. You just look like you're ready for a miracle. You're ready for God to do something really good for you? Good. What's your name? Kyle. 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 It's good to meet you. Good to have you here. I'm just going to pray for you for right now. That's all right. Let's all just bow our heads, close our eyes, just reverence toward God. Father, I thank you. Uh, you, you said in your word that all, all the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. And thank you there's shouting going in heaven. I thank you for this young lady that's ready to come and get some things right with you. And the, she'll never be the same. Thank you, Lord. This will be a turning point in her life. This will be a pivotal point. When she leaves the building tonight, she's going to know. She not only knows she's saved, she's in, 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 she's in, in a great place with you. She stands right before you like she's never made a mistake in her life. It's going to be the beginning of a whole different direction for her life. She's going to finish this year out in grand and glorious style. Go into next year knowing I'm right with God and I'm staying that way all the rest of my life. I'm going to spend eternity with Him. So I pray for her, dear Father. She'll never be the same. Thank you for her bold hunger for you. And I pray that that'll be, this will be like pouring gas on a fire. That just This hunger will just grow and multiply and and she'll be like a, what we call a firebrand for God. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name, Father. Amen. Amen. Kyle. Um, yeah, I could lead you to prayer out here, and that'd be fine. That'd be really good. But I'd like you, if you wouldn't mind, to go to a prayer room just for a couple of minutes. And uh, you two can go together if that's all right. And, and uh, this fine gentleman right here is going to share a couple of verses with you. Just make sure you got what you came for. And we ought to just let her know how much we appreciate. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we ought to lift our hands and thank God. Thank you, Lord. May she never be the same. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. We'll go ahead and be seated just for a moment. We're going to give you an opportunity to, to, uh, for tithes and offerings. Finish the year out great. That, that tomorrow night's New Year's Eve. I don't know how we got there so quick. It was just last New Year's Eve, just yesterday, something like that. But, um, I, I, you know, the psalmist said, uh, and of course the envelopes are right there in front of you. You can write your checks out to WOC or, or World Outreach Church. Uh, the psalmist said, he said that God, he, uh, he uh, lifts us. Uh, uh, I got to get this right. I'm gonna, I want to get this correctly. Lifts the poor, I've got it. Lifts the poor out of the dust. And the needy, you know, we thought, we, I don't know about you, I thought when I was a kid, I thought God wanted you broke. That's one reason I ran so fast away. I Broke just didn't fit my mentality for the future for me, you know. Sick, poor, and sorry just didn't sound very exciting. But he lifts the poor out of the dust and the needy out of, he calls it the dunghill. That's the manure pile. You know, over in Europe, they call it the honey wagon area. But uh, mercy, yes. But he says he, he lifts the poor out of the dust and the needy out of the dunghill that he may set them up with princes, even the princes of his people. He said God's able to take, it doesn't matter where we are in life. It doesn't matter where we were in life. It doesn't matter our, our, our genetics, our, 
our environment, our education, none of that makes any difference. Almighty God is able to look at us and go, I can lift you out of the dust. I can pull you out of the dunghill of poverty. I can set you up with, with, with princes, even the princes of my people. And, and uh, you know, we might as well, if that's what God wants to do, at least we can do is let him do it. If God wants to bless us, abundantly bless us, we ought to let him do it. Amen. If he gets, if, if he, the 35th Psalm says he, uh, uh, let them shout for joy and be glad the favor of thy righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. If God gets pleasure out of me being prosperous, then I, I want to give him a good day. I want to make him real happy. If he takes pleasure out of me being blessed, then I want him to get lots of pleasure. I have, I'm okay with that. But I was thinking, that I, uh, I remember a, a church we went to 25 years ago now, probably close to that. We were doing a meeting at this church. It was a, it was a uh, storefront church, kind of a, like a, a little storefront area. We're in this church, and uh, there was a, the pastor, after one of the services, he pointed a man out in the back, said, see that man right, right back there? I said, yeah. He said, uh, he said, we would be having services here on Sunday morning. He said, that man would stumble drunk across our parking lot every Sunday morning. So he was an alcoholic. He said he just, he just drunk. He just stumbled across the parking lot day after week after week after week after week. And he said, but you know, all of a sudden one Sunday morning said he stumbled in. Thank God the church didn't run him off. Thank God the church didn't get high and mighty and elevated and lifted up and all that other. They just let him come in. You know, just highly inebriated, alcoholic, drunk. He didn't said one Sunday morning, he just stumbled and sat down. Said then the service, he walked forward, got born again. Fellow came in, got saved. Said he kept coming for a little while. Said one Sunday, he comes up and he gets filled with, he came up to get filled with the Holy Ghost. And he said, now he's saved and he's filled. And he said, he just kept coming. Just kept coming. Now, I don't know if he got you know, uh, sober instantly or not. Sometimes people do. Sometimes it takes them a little while to let the uh, spirit overcome the flesh. That can happen. Either, whatever it was, the people just left him alone. They just loved on him. He said, he said, and he kept coming and coming. He said, he would not miss the service. Not miss it. He kept coming and coming and coming. And he said, man, he kept getting uh, stronger and stronger and stronger in his walk with God. And before long, he got himself a really good job. And then he got a better job. And then he got a better job. And then he got a better job. And he said, just thought I'd let you know. He said, the man drives a brand new Mercedes every year. He owns a number of businesses. He's the biggest giver in the church. He went from the dunghill of poverty. God set him up with princes. He said, there's a testimony of what God can do with anybody's life. Because if there's anybody that would never make it, it was that guy. And he said, he said everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. And he said, he's the, he's the biggest giver in the church because he probably makes more money than anybody. And, the, and, and it didn't start out that way. It started out with just a, a man falling in love with Jesus. If, he can, if God could do it for that man 25 years ago, he can sure do it for anybody today. Doesn't matter where we were. Doesn't matter where we are. It's where we're headed. God's well able to lift, lift us out of the dust and the dunghill of poverty and put us up with the princes of his people. Praise God. You ready to give? Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love us so much. You could have just saved us and made us ready to go to heaven and just live like the devil's doormat down here. And, and we'd have probably been okay with that, but you went beyond that. And Jesus was made poor for our sake that we through his poverty might be made rich, abundantly blessed, taken care of. He came, Jesus came to preach the gospel, good news to the poor. Good news to the poor is poor don't have, poor don't have to, we don't have to be poor anymore. And we're thankful for that. It's not our highest priority, but it's an added blessing. We thank you for it, dear Father. And so I thank you that as we continue to give, no matter what the world does, no matter what the economy does, it doesn't make any difference. We're operating on your, your currency. And we thank you for it, Father. As we do, we can know beyond a shadow of a doubt, we'll always be set up with princes, the princes of your people. If we're willing and obedient, we'll always eat the good of the land. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
about you, but I'm glad I came to church. So next Wednesday night, how many of you know who's going to be here? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, Dr. Mark Barkley will be here next Wednesday night. He's flying in. He's going to be ministering in Damata, I think, on Tuesday. And then he will be here with us, the church, on Wednesday night. So help us spread the word. You know, at the holidays, uh, so many people have been gone, and it's just been crazy. And so uh, we want to just make sure that the word is out there. So put it on your Facebook page. Tell everybody you know. Text people. Invite them to come next Wednesday night right in here. Dr. Mark Barkley. Is there anybody here that you don't know who he is? You've never been in one of his services. It's okay. Raise your hand if you've never been in one of his services. Well, let me just tell you, you're in for a treat. He steps in. He operates in that prophetic flow. He is a prophet, and he's a true prophet. And um, I'm telling you what, our church is, uh, is always changed for the better after he's been here. And so we encourage you. Don't let anything keep you from being here next Wednesday night or, for that matter, Sunday. We'll be right back in here Sunday morning at 9 and 11. We'll look forward to seeing you then. Invite somebody to come to church with you. Let them know they are loved. Jesus loves them. We love you. Happy New Year. We'll see you Sunday. Mm -hmm.